What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So, it's uh, it's been a minute since I posted anything and it's been a, a, a good while since I posted anything about the trailer. Um, I just kinda need to take a few months um, to financially catch up, <laughs> you know, that happens. Um, but uh, I'm caught up, everything is good and we are back on track and uh, I actually just ordered and received this big pallet of insulation. So, that is what we are going to be doing. We are going to be insulating the walls finally i'm super excited for that um it's gonna be a lot of work because we have to take like all of the trim off and everything and then all the walls down and then we're doing the ceiling too um so but it should be a really big difference our old trailer that we had was beautiful and wonderful but i never insulated the walls and you could tell it it's it's necessity so uh i'm super excited let's uh let's get into it before we get too deep in today's video, take a look at my new hats. Uh, we just had these done. These are some super sick Richardson. Um, they are leather patch, which is super cool. I've never had leather patch hats done before. I've wanted these for a long time. Um, they're kind of a pain in the butt to have done uh, locally here. So uh, this is probably maybe the only batch I'm ever going to do of these, but they're super awesome. I have them in flat bill or curve bill. Um, and they should be live on the website by the time you guys are seeing this. So shopbackyardbeaters.com, go get you one and uh, rep the brand, thanks. So today we are back on the Crawler Hauler Conversion Series and uh, we're gonna be doing a pretty exciting diesel heater install. Um, so I'm super stoked about this. I already opened this as you can see, but I haven't gone into it too much. Uh, Vivor. They've sponsored this channel once in the past. Um, they sent me the TIG weld that I gave away and they reached out and wanted to sponsor again, which is awesome to me because I was actually looking on getting one of these anyways. So uh, huge shout out to Vivor. So what this is, is a 12 volt diesel heater. It's an all-in-one package, as you can see. It's like a, like a little welder lunch pail thing. They do sell these in like a like a blown apart kit so you can have like just the heater and then the tank and the pump and the wiring and stuff and you can mount it all yourself or you can buy this which is just kind of the all-in-one kit so you can move it around let's uh plug it all in and fire it up see if it works all right. almost exactly a gallon that's how long how much it holds from what I've read, uh, that's about all you need. These run for, a, they're super efficient on fuel. Well, you can hear it's blowing. It's 
riffing. The exhaust is really hot, like really hot coming out of there. I can put my hand about there for about that long till it starts to burn. I mean, it's probably as hot as my, my propane heater, you know, that I usually use. Um, I did crank it up with both the remote and the screen. They both work. The fuel pump has gotten way quieter now that it's like running and going. I mean, I can, I can hear it, but barely. It's just a little tick, 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 tick. Um, the fan is so loud that it overpowers it, you know? It just sounds like a furnace. So, pretty stoked on that. I imagine there's like a cool down cycle or something. You can't just like turn it off. But I mean, that's pretty good. It shuts up pretty quick. All right, thanks v -Bor. All right, Put the lights on, get to work in here. So, um, ended up being just some one inch. I'm going with the Pink Panther stuff. This is super normal. Uh, everybody who insulates these uses those for the most part, and I used it on the ramp already. So this is already insulated with that. And then additionally, I got a whole bunch of silicone. So the silicone is going to be for, I want to run a bead anywhere that the aluminum is connecting to the steel. Um, like see where these screws are. These are all spots for water to get in. That's gonna be quite the task. Um, but I'm just really trying to ensure that no water gets in our last one the walls warped because water got in somehow some way and you can see all of these little trim pieces these all have to come off on the ceiling and the walls all of them the floor they have these these trim on the bottom here they have to come off um, and then from there it's just zipping these little screws off the aluminum corner panels need to come off. Um, and those are actually gonna stay off for the time being because that's how I'm gonna run my wiring. All my wiring is gonna run uh, inside here, basically on top of these boards. Um, and then they can go down to the outlets and these will just be beauty plates that go over the top of it all. So the camera just didn't record it for some reason, but the uh, first little section is siliconed. You can see in here, I got beads on both sides as well as around each screw head. I filled in the hole down there. So this is from here to there. Top, did it across the top. Uh, honestly, pretty time consuming, but the bigger problem is I used a tube and a half of silicone just in that. So that, that just made this project a lot more expensive because silicone's not super cheap. It's like $12 or two. Uh, so that sucks, but I really want to use silicone, not caulk or something because it's flexible and this thing's going to be moving, especially the outside walls. So I want it to be flexible and I've had really good luck with silicone on the Jeep and stuff. So I think I'm just going to suck it up. halfway <laughs> this is gonna be a lot of work all right so it's the next day and uh, last night I got all of the walls uh, beams uh, silicone and sealed um, you can see in here they're all nice and sealed all the way down I did across the top as well as along the bottom um, so no water getting in and then you can see today I did a couple practice runs here on some scrap pieces of the insulation. Um, you can see that uh, they're fitting in here nice. Um, 
I'm not totally sure about, you know, these seams where there are multiple pieces together. That's gonna happen for sure. Especially on these pieces like this beam where there's a lip here I gotta go in and a lip on this side that I have to go in. The only way I was able to do that is to slice it down the middle and kind of like push it in. So I'm not sure, maybe I need to go get some insulation tape or something to cover those. Maybe it's not a big deal, I don't know. I'm not an expert at this, I'm just kind of winging it. Um, I also am doing some of these little one inch pieces to go in between the two beams, just kind of shoving them on top of the screws there. Um, I think that's important, otherwise there'd be a pretty big gap here of lack of insulation all the way down the trailer. few hours have passed and I have this whole wall uh, insulated as you can see these are all done um, and I also haven't done the beams yet um, because even with uh, just cutting this little one inch uh, insulation it's taking forever and uh, I don't all right, camera is not cooperating switching to the phone um, anyways this uh, little, you know, cutting one inch strips to go up there is taking forever. And this, this stuff's kind of hard to cut that small. Like it's easy to cut down the middle of a big piece, but the little pieces are hard. So I, I did buy some of this right stuff foam, um, which I've heard people rave about online, uh, specifically for this and uh, down at the bottom. So you can see I used it uh, down here where they actually already were using foam from the factory. So I'm going to let that cure overnight and see how much of a pain in the ass it is to clean off because obviously that needs to be flat. Um, and if that is easy to do, then I'm just gonna go ahead and do that for all of the cracks because it was way quicker. I mean, that took me like 30 seconds. Uh, and then I could just use all the foam for the actual walls, which is what I bought it for, so. All right guys, so I literally went and bought a new camera today just for this video. My old one was just wigging out, I don't know. So let me know how this looks. Hopefully it's working good and you can hear me. Um, I also, last night, went and got all of this spray foamed. I know I said I was only gonna do one uh, beam, but I decided I'm just gonna do it all. It was so much quicker and easier and uh, now that it's all nice and dry, I went ahead and trimmed one, which was pretty easy just with the uh, the old steak knife trick. You know, you just kind of saw it back and forth and it cuts right down smooth. So that is pretty much what we're going for here is uh, insulation and foam. We are going to have a little bit of metal on metal here that's going to transfer through to the wood, um, but is what it is. like that it looks like a normal trailer again so I'm pretty happy with that I'm going to leave all of the little trim pieces off for now because I need to do my outlets and wiring 
and uh, those are just going to get in the way. Um, they need to be trimmed afterwards anyway. So currently we're going to be left with this little ugly gap here that is temporary and I'm not worried about it. update here this wall is done all the way I've got the corners done the front panel done and then I have started on this wall and the door working my way down that's how far I've gotten I got to do the rest of that so we're getting there we're making some progress um, I also as you saw got the uh, 220 not 220 110 power uh, outlet installed on the outside and some cable ran up right here which is the only reason this wall is not on yet. Um, I need to basically figure out where I want my outlet and then get that fished up through there. Um, and then this spot, I've decided on the outside, I want to add an additional uh, marker light right there just cause it's hard to see. The, uh, the other one is like way back there. So it's hard to see in the dark. I can't see that one. I like to be able to see that. So I'm gonna add a marker light and I wanna be able to you know, run the wire and seal that. So I'm kind of delaying on this panel, which unfortunately is delaying the wood for all of this as well. Um, but yeah, so, you know, we're slowly plugging away. Um, to make things a little more worse, uh, the police stopped by and said that I'm no longer allowed to have this in front of my house, which is really annoying. So they gave me two weeks to finish my project here, um, and then I got to move it. Uh, like an hour and a half away to my parents' property um, and then work on it on the weekends, I guess. So that's going to slow the progress a bit. But if I can just get the insulation done, uh, everything else is like, you know, painting the walls and doing the floors and stuff that I can come out and do for like a whole day. Um, this is like a two to three week every night project that just isn't going to be possible with it being so far away. So hoping to get it done, hoping to get it uh Insulated. It does feel warmer in here already, um, so that's a plus. So just gotta keep on keeping on. All right, well, check it out. We got some outlets installed. My first two, um, they actually work. I've got the heater running right now, so that's awesome. Um, obviously, we plan to have a whole bunch more, but even just having two in here is really nice. So that you might notice the spacing's a little odd there. Um, that's because 
there's some lines in the ground for where the shower is going to end. And basically our counters are going to overhang past the middle here a little bit. So they're spaced out evenly for that. Um, and then I'm actually going to put a USB outlet right here that runs off the 12 volt. Um, so got to get this top piece on and then we can cut that one out. I also got this uh, super sweet new light switch. Um, you can see it's missing one. So there's a reason for that. Um, this is to replace the janky little light switch that it comes with. Um, and there's three here because we're going to have one for the interior lights and then one for exterior on this side and one for exterior on that side, which will be nice for when we're camping and you want to go get something out of the cooler, um, or just, you know, have some party lights at night. Um, also, I think it's gonna be really nice for parking in the dark. You can just like open the door, flip those two switches and the whole side of the trailer is gonna be lit up on both sides so I can see what I'm doing. Um, the reason it's missing one is because I forgot that I have hall hallway switches in here. So you can like turn the one off down there and then turn it back on here. So whether you open the ramp or whatever, uh, you can do that. And my dumbass ordered uh, two way switches. So I had to order a three way switch to replace that. But uh, I think I'm going to get this hung up right now. Um, I'll just have the wires done going through and then we'll move on. so much better than this little janky thing that we had on there from the factory. These have a really nice feel. Super stoked on that. Uh, obviously this will be better once I get that other switch in the mail. So uh, moving on. All right, so it's been a couple of days and as you can see, the whole trailer, all the walls are insulated all the way around. I have most of the boards back up. Um, so I'm very happy to have that bit done. Still got to do the roof. Um, that's probably next after a few quick things I want to do before I put these walls back up. Um, first thing being, um, this marker light. So I really want to add a marker light basically right here on the front, um, because the first one is way back here for some reason. And with the width of the door, I think it blocks that light from me being able to see it in the I'm driving and I wanna be able to use those lights to see, you know, gauge where I'm at on the road. Um, I always do that and I can't see anything on this side. It's just pitch black. So I wanna add a marker light uh, right here basically. Um, so I bought the exact same kind as far as I know and uh, gonna, Drill some holes. to some exterior lights. So I got uh, two, four, six of these. Um, these are just some LED outside lights. Um, and I'm going to put two on each side of the trailer and two on the back for loading lights. And then I'm, the each side is going to be independently switched right here. So you can see there's three. The first one's gonna be for the interior and then the other two, one's gonna be for one side, one's gonna be for the other side. Um, again, the idea is for parking, um, it'll be nice in the dark, or for you know camp lights, so we can turn it on depending which side the door is on. It's almost always gonna be this side, but 
I figured it's pretty quick and easy to add on the other side, so. I already have them laid out up top where I want them. Um, one right over the door, as you can see, and one right in between those two marker lights down there. Um, so, drill some more holes. All right, y'all, so <clears throat> lots has happened. I thought I'd take a quick second to update you on the trailer and the current status. Um, today is the day that I have to move this thing due to the police telling me that it can't be here anymore, which is a huge bummer because I'm working on it every day and now I gotta drive like an hour and a half to work on it, so progress is gonna slow to only the weekends. Um, but, as you can see, all of the insulation on the walls is done. I also did all the insulation on the ceiling. I'll throw up some pictures of all that stuff. I haven't been filming everything because I've been trying to bust my ass to get as much done before my, this deadline came. Um, but the insulation's working. It's so much warmer in here than it is outside. Um, especially with the additions that I've added here being the diesel heater. Um, I also have some outlets and another one down here for the uh, the power converter. So this basically charges the batteries when it's plugged into shore power or the generator. Um, and you can see some of my wiring and stuff. I've got a battery shutoff switch for anything, basically <clears throat> anything that I don't want to be sucking power in case like the diesel heater or the water heater or water pump or any of that stuff has like a little you know, power drain. I can turn that off when we're not using it so the batteries stay nice and full. Um, and then you can just, once we get there, you just turn the power on, you know. Um, so that's basically just for storage. And then I have some distribution blocks here for easy tapping for future accessories so I don't have to be pulling the walls down every single time I want to add anything 12 volt. I realize this looks ugly right now, but you got to remember there's going to be cabinets and counters right here. It's going to hide all this. So that'll be much better. Um, what else? Um, you guys saw me add these exterior lights. These are wired in. They now work. Um, I have the interior lights on here, the driver's side exterior lights here, and the passenger side exterior lights here. So we can turn them on independently. I'll turn around, walk around here and show you guys. I got the lights up there as well, one on each side. Um, I'll throw up a quick video of what that looks like at night. Huge difference, super happy with that. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen this yet or not, um, but this is my 30 amp shore power plug I got. So this powers the uh, interior outlets, the 120 outlets. Um, obviously you need to have that plugged into something. Uh, shore power, obviously stuff like that. And then let's see what else. I also got the diesel tank. I built this mount for it. Um, this is just welded on here right now. And then you can take this off to get to it. And then this runs down to the diesel heater. So now there's no more diesel in the cab, which is nice because it did have a, a minor diesel smell. It no longer does. Um, and then on top of that, this is now the exhaust exit. So I added this pretty little beauty plate. So the exhaust runs um, straight down and out and it's all nice and buttoned up in there. Um, I'll throw up some pictures of some like uh, the basically the heat shield that I did for the floorboard. Uh, this diesel heater from Vivor, remember this was a sponsored thing so this is super cool. This was all meant to be one big unit and I just took the diesel tank out and put it outside. It's really the only thing that I've done and then I extended the exhaust outside. Um, but this runs off the 12 volt, so no generator needed. We can just turn it on at any point and it has a, a key fob so we can hang this key fob in the back by our bed and you can just turn it on and it starts going and it's all on a thermostat. It works so good. I cannot believe how much of a difference, how much of a difference that one little heater made. Um, I can be out here, it was cold, 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 like snow in here cold, and I was out here in a t-shirt working on the insulation before I was even done. So, super stoked on that. That should definitely uh, be a game changer between the insulation and the heater. 
Um, you might see that I actually have another key fob here. And this is for my fancy new toy that I just picked up. If I walk around the back. Dun, 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 dun. So I went and got Predator 5000 super quiet generator. Um, and this is electric start with a key fob as well. So the theory being when we go camping, I can roll this out to the tongue. I need to find some way to secure it to keep it from being stolen. Plug it in and then Joey in the morning when she wakes up if she wants to make coffee turn on the TV or oh, the TV runs off the 12 volt I don't know anything that needs the generator she doesn't have to wake me up to go out and like pull on the generator she can just push the on button and it fires up and we have power in here um, and then turn it off just like a normal camper so and then it, it's on wheels with a nice handle so it rolls really nice and easy and just put it back inside when we're done you know for the weekend um, just got to find a way to secure it to the tongue. I'm not sure. I'm thinking maybe like a bike lock or something around that. Not totally sure. But we will see. Um, that's basically the update. As you can see, I'm not even close to done in here. We don't have any of the trim pieces back up yet. The roof is like half-ass put back on. Um, a big bummer that i gotta move this thing it's gonna really slow things down but uh at least once it's moved the stress of oh gosh i have to move this will be gone and uh, i can get back to filming like everything um because i've been just trying to get as much done as i can so the filming has been put aside but uh the rest of the build will be better filmed and uh yeah i mean i'm really really anxious to get the floors done so we can start doing, you know, all because I want to epoxy the floors before I do the Jeep mounts, the tie downs and the in-floor winch mount. I want to cut those after I epoxy the floors. So plus I'm just like destroying the floors walking in here. So I really want to get those done. And uh, yeah, I think I'm going to call it here. Um, and thanks for watching and hope you stick around for the next one.